You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Attention Matters with your host, Alice Aspen March. Alice is here to discuss why the kind of attention we get and give to others is vital and impacts our behavior and our feelings. People can remember forever the kind of attention they got from teachers, parents and grandparents, dentists, from everyone in their lives, especially when it feels good and or feels bad. Alice is here to give you tools to intervene in your attention factor. So please welcome the host of Attention Matters, Alice Aspen March. And we're alive and we are on BBM Global Network and other platforms and our show, this is my show, Why Our Attention Matters. And I am your host, Alice Aspen March. And I have a super guest today who calls herself a social entrepreneur. Her name is Shirley Moulton. And I have attended several of the events that she has founded, and we're going to talk about that, which are called Practicing the Art of Living. Welcome, Shirley. I don't know what's going on, but I'm alive and well and kicking, and we are set to go. So welcome to Why Our Attention Matters. Well, thank you, Alice. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank well, you I've for been, having me on. I've been chasing you around for months, Shirley, because, I you know, know. <laughs> I, um, I just came to your events because I liked the Academy of Life and what you were doing. So mm-hmm. your PR your PR is working. But now that you've sent me a, your background, you are a loaded lady from originally Jamaica who only yes, moved ma'am. here 22 years ago. And you have a master's degree. What's your master's degree in, Shirley? Finance. Finance. And mm-hmm. then you have... And you have other degrees. You are so balanced. I love this because you're you're interested in what I'm talking about. You've asked me a couple of very good questions, I see. Um, when did I realize that the attention we receive in life is the root cause of our feelings and our behavior? That's a loaded one. Recently, I have to say I realized that recently, although I've been working on my on the attention factor, writing about it, researching about it, talking about it all over the world, I had not realized the power of our own attention and what kind of attention we give to others. So Mm -hmm. we know enough research now, we have enough research now, that when people, it doesn't matter if they're babies, they're infants, they're preschoolers, they're in college, when they don't get the kind of attention they need, they automatically uh, act out. That's about as simple as I can say it. That's, um, that's, that, that's so true. I mean, well, I, 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 was look, I was looking at, I was looking at what this, this whole attention means, and we've talked about it quite a bit, Alice. And I yeah. think, you know, despite research, you just have to look around and observe. And I think when I was growing up, I didn't realize what was happening. You know, like what what things happened in my life that's allowing me to behave in a certain way or to feel a certain way. I had no, I mean, I had a sense of that, but I didn't know where to place it. It was only until I watched two generations of my nieces and nephews grow up, my nieces and then my great, you know, grandnieces and nephews. And I watched how 
that certain things that they experienced in their lives impacted the choices that they would eventually make and the behaviors that they would exhibit. And then it became very clear to me that whomever our caregiver is, um, you know, parent or whomever is caring for you as a human when you were born, you know, throughout your life, that person has a massive impact, a long-lasting impact. If they're, uh, if, you know. Well, I do know, but I, I, I was interrupting you, and I have to just say one thing. You, you mentioned the magic word, and it's feel. Mm-hmm. We we feel all the different kinds of attention we get. That's right. And we may not even be able to articulate it, Alice, but we can certainly feel it, right? Because we're right. really feeling beings. We're energetic beings, and it's all about what we feel. Um, I think there was a quote from, I think it was Maya Angelou, who said that, People don't care what you say to them or what you give to them. They care about how you make them feel. Yep. Feelings are long lasting. And that's how we, that's truly how we interface, you know, and we sometimes can't articulate what those feelings are, but we're feeling it. You know, we're feeling something. We're feeling either bad or good. Yeah. That's what we're feeling. Or, or, Or in between. Yes. Well, there, there, there isn't. I've learned that there's not too much in between. There, there, well, that's the stoicism. That's the, you know, where you're trying to shut off feeling good or bad. You're just in the middle there. Like my yeah. sister calls it flatlining. And people do feel flatlined. You can see of them course. going into that place. Yes, exactly. Because they don't want to go on either, you know, the bad feeling or the good feeling. So they just sit somewhere in the middle. But we're, we're feeling anyway, whether they know it or not. They sit in the back of the room, Shirley. That's what they Interesting. do. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. And you know and what? We they can... become the observer. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, we can also hear attention. We can see yes. attention. Yes. yes. We can, we can uh, sense attention. And I don't think that we grow up realizing that because our parents never realized it. You know, to blame right. our parents is really a wasted uh, value, a wasted emotion, because they never got the kind of attention they needed either. So how would they know to give it to us? Right, because basically what we do is we pattern, right? We yes. just mimic what we, we get. And if they don't didn't get it, they can't give it. That's right. So That's until absolutely. you stand, if, until you recognize that and stand in a place of awareness and say, you know what, I did not get the attention that I needed, but I'm going to change that moving forward. Make a conscious decision of changing that. So when, if I have, when I have my children, I am going to give them the attention they needed, whether I got it or not. I'm going to figure out how to do that because innately, I believe that we all come, if, if we sit quietly enough and to sense our essence, which is just good, um, then we can get to that place. Because really, attention, I think, is about giving goodness, you know, showing goodness and kindness and decency to another human being so that they can feel seen, you know, seen. Yes, I and, do that. Um, Mm-hmm. And that, and when they feel seen, they recognize that they matter. And when yes. when someone feels like they matter, they can go conquer the world. And you know what the attention factor does? And briefly, it really empowers people. It's the beginning mm-hmm. and the essence of self care. Yes, because mm-hmm. you have to give it to yourself first. And right. you have to know what you need first. And if you don't tell people, you have these expectations that sometimes or very often don't get fulfilled. And then you get angry. That's one of the ways you act out. And I am convinced that is the root cause of our heavy divorce rate in the world. Because you're going to disconnect when you don't get mm-hmm. the kind of attention you need. And you're going to get angry, and you're going to leave. Did you ever read that Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne? No, I haven't. 
Well, the A, the, a, the scarlet A, or, uh, is for adultery, but it also stands for attention. And she didn't get what she needed from her husband, so she walked down and met the pastor. Right, right. And the, the rest is history. And, <laughs> and <laughs> that I know, but is, see, we have to start. The thing is that we have to start changing that. Yes. I think when we recognize that we didn't get the attention we need, right, that we needed, yes. Yes. is then that we got to turn and look back at ourselves and then give ourselves the attention that we thought we should have had, right? So that's yes. the part of self-care that you're talking about. How yes. do I then say, it's okay, I didn't get it, but guess what? I'm about to give it to myself. I'm worthy of it. And what well, does that look like well, for me? You know, and it's really starting from that place of awareness and self-love and saying, you know what? It's okay. I, I didn't get it. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not going to blame my parents because they didn't get it. So, but I want, to break, I want to break the cycle. I want to break this pattern. So how do I do that? Then I want to turn back and look at myself and see how much, what it means to give myself attention and love. That's your need. Right. The, and sure. That I need. And then, go ahead. Attention is our primary core need. Bottom With, line. Uh, Absolutely. Without it, babies don't survive in hospitals, orphanages. Monkeys right. don't survive when they're right. taken away from their mothers. You know, uh, I'm <laughs> practicing the art of living is exactly. Mm -hmm why I had to come and find out what you were talking about. Right, right, Cause right. It really, I'm, yeah, go ahead. I'm go so ahead. excited no, ahead, about Alice. this. What? No, go ahead, Alice. I'm so excited about our discussion that I get energetic and then I interrupt, and it's very rude <laughs> to do that. No, 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 keep going, keep going. You know, the, because it's what you're talking about is so essential. And when you talk about people who don't get it, then they end up bankrupt. You know, that's where we get the sociopaths and the psychopaths because they're, they're not feeling that, that love and care, you know, so they're left barren and they grow up very empty and they, 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 you know, they impact the world in a, in a very, as you know, very destructive way. So yes, this is critical, and I think it's the kind of thing that we should be the forefront of everybody's agenda. You know, we sit and we raise kids, and we, you know, we're more focused on them getting, you know, having a high IQ and high this and high that, going to the Ivy League schools, this and that and the other, when really what kids really need and want from a caregiver is attention. Is attention is being, to know. Being, that, that's right. We want to feel the people that we're not invisible. Right. So we want to feel that we're seen. It's kind of like there's a South African Zulu greeting, you know, that they use called Sawubona. And it means I see you. I see you. It's I can walk in your shoe. Therefore, there's no way that I can harm you. Right. And that's right. empathy. You I was going to ask that you. Big, hmm? That's that's what empathy is. It is is it yeah. not? And that's it what is. our country doesn't have right now. And that's what, exactly, exactly. It's, that's where we're bankrupt right now. Empathy has to see each other to truly be truly seen by someone. You know, and I think if we really look deep enough, I think we have more in common than we have. You know not in common, you know, because I think if well, we look deep enough, and that's the, that's the key piece, and, and it's hard because people are mired in their day-to-day. -day, they don't have time to reflect and pause and take a break to do some self, you know, discovery, self-introspection, um, and it, it's difficult. It's difficult. Surely I, we got to go to, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you again. We have to go to a commercial break but we'll be back shortly don't go away this conversation is so alive and juicy we'll be back 
Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. And we're alive. And we're at 866-451-1451 if you want to talk to us. Surely what I have come to know is that if we all realize we have the same needs, all of us, mm-hmm. we're human beings. Yeah. This will change yeah. how we behave and how we live. That's right. That's right. And it starts with, you know, this deeper understanding of, you know, when you when we hear, okay, well, how did the world begin? You know, this whole existential conversation, we're from the same, we're, 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 we're you know, the big bang, we're banged out from the same stars. And yep. if, that's, if that's true, then we all have to hold that we are truly one. And baked in us was the essence of whomever created this amazing universe. Right. In each and every one of us, every one of us got that. And it's it's to see that in everyone, our ability to be able to see that in everyone, our, our, our essence, our pure decency, our grace and our goodness and to unite, you know, behind that. And I think that's um, that's what most, you know, most people have trouble with. Um, and I think one of the reasons for that, too, Alex, is because, you know, we are. You talk about human beings. We're humans. We're human do- doing. We're doing a lot. The human side of us are, you know, we're the workhorse. Um, we're doing. And then the being nature of us is where you've really got to be present to really sit and think and reflect. And we don't do, we don't do a lot of that. And the, it's interesting that I'm looking at COVID, and I think this whole COVID um, experience has really slowed us down and people are really sort of taking a moment to reflect. We're reaching out to old friends. We have time, right, on our hands. We're looking at ourselves. And I think, um, you know, it's very important. Maybe people recognize, you know, that, um, you know, all of a sudden, you know, what do my kids need? You know, they're home now. They're they're with the parents. They're, you know, they're not at school. They're in the home. You know, how, do I know these kids? Who are they, right? Um, right. And, okay. <laughs> you know, and how do I how do I show up for them in a real way? And that's that's hard. That's you know, it's not easy. So, well, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's it's a process. You do it all the life that you're their parents. And sometimes kids come when they're on Medicare and they say, Mom, I want to ask you a question. 
do you <laughs> think you inherited anything from your mom and dad? And I was going to say, are you kidding? But hmm. I didn't because I realized that he was coming from a different place suddenly, a much deeper place that he was really thinking about. And I spent an hour with him talking about all the things that maybe he hadn't heard before that I had said. And it was wonderful. He says, I want you to write this down. Do you hear me? I want you to write all of it down. There are not many people who are as old as you are, and you've got to write this for everybody. It's very important. So I said, trust mm. me. T trust me. I will write it down. And he, he, and, and he, I have to tell you this story. I, I said, do you remember when I asked you to trust me for your 14th birthday? Yeah. And I said, he says, I want to, I want to spend it with my, with my, um, I have to take that off, with my friends. And I said, trust me, David, we're going out for dinner. It's, it's, I mean, we want to celebrate with you. Just trust me. My phone is ringing because I forgot to turn it off. I hope you don't hear it. Anyway, he was really angry with me because he mm -hmm. would, I, I, you know, we took him out for dinner. So we got home. And, of course, he opened the door, and there were all of his friends. Oh, that's so great. I said, it was great, but I had to bring that back. So he'll realize that I've been working on this trust with him his whole life, and I don't know where that comes from, and I'm going to find out. Why doesn't he trust his mother? Mm. And did Why he don't... articulate, did he say that in those words? Well, he said, no, no, but he hasn't trusted me since he was 14, I guess. Mm -hmm. And that's the, uh, that's the other thing. You know, when you think about how do we make kids feel, do we make them feel safe? Because oh. they have to feel safe in order to trust. Absolutely. You are saying all the magic words. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know what I was looking for. I was looking for, well, I was looking for the role I had played in my youngest son's heavy television viewing and going and using drugs. I didn't know what I had done. I talked about everything. We had a safe household, but he, and I was terrified that I could lose him. And I looked mm -hmm. through the back of 70 books, Shirley, couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. And after I went to this course at UCLA, which was called the obstacles to intimacy. Um, hmm. And that's when the professor talked about orphans and monkeys disconnecting because they didn't get the kind of attention they needed. I had an epiphany mm -hmm. on that word. All of right. a sudden. And, and, it's, and they don't have to be orphans. You know, we have orphans in our own homes. Oh, right? Absolutely. The word orphan. They're emotionally orphaned in, and living with their parents under the same roof. Brilliant. You know, you just said something, you just verbalized something that is so simple, but so vital and so dramatic and so honest and true. We mm -hmm. have orphans mm -hmm. living in our own homes. Correct. I, I, I've never said that. It's it's uh, what you went right to my heart and my soul with that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I got and that's what we that's Alice what we have to be aware of. You see, when you come into awareness and just to just to like wake up to the reality of these things, then you recognize that you've got to you, you, you yourself, um, you've got to change, you know, as a caregiver. You but, just can't go on like that. But but, you know, people think they, they ask me if I'm still working on television and I say no, the impact of television. No. Uh, what are you doing now? And I, be, and I say, well, I've been talking about attention for 20 years, and they'll say to me, oh, I know all about attention. And that's the <laughs> end of the conversation. But it's only the beginning of the conversation because they don't know what I know. Mm -hmm. That's you right. Know, attention is a, a mainstream word. You know, stand at mm -hmm. attention. Give me your attention. People get punished for acting out for attention, which is a genuine emotional deficit they've got. Right. Right. And, well, you know, if only, it's so interesting. 
if only kids could articulate, you know, you know, and some of these kids are doing it now. You know, I think the, the younger ones are kind of different. They're much more verbal than we were. They can articulate their needs and what they're getting and what they're not getting. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing some of that where kids are not more vocal and they will express what, what, what they're getting and not getting, you know? And it's well, so, um, it's so interesting. So interesting. They, they know that something's wrong. They yeah, don't they exactly can sense know what and, it is. Exactly. Yeah. They can sense and feel. And yes. if they come from a pure, you know, I think, and when they come from that pure space and talk, they sort of say it, you know, they'll say it. But, and it's funny because they'll, when like zero through seven, they're more open and they talk more. And then after that, now they're becoming, you know, um, they're becoming more aware, you know, of themselves and how if they say certain things that kind of impact the past. So they kind of shut down and they're not as honest anymore. And you, know so, what else, you know what else they're seeing? They're seeing all the stuff that we've all right. accumulated, and it doesn't do the job. Right. They, they don't want right. to buy a house. They don't want to buy stuff. They don't want to buy things. So they're aware, but they're, they don't know. They, they need to hear me. That's what they need. And I have... <laughs> They definitely well, need you to hear, hear you, Alice, because I'm telling you, you have a world of wisdom. I mean, with all of those years of life you've lived, I mean, the, the amount, and I, I agree with your son, write it down, you know, because it's so valuable. I to promise sort of have, him. Yes. And yeah. it's really important. You know, it's very valuable to have your wise your words of wisdom documented someplace. Well, I have to help us through and to be and to be real practical about it. To be real practical, to sort of, you know, you've lived a life. You've had kids. You've had marriage. You've had a marriage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, is to describe that and to, know, to talk about. Mm-hmm. You know what I also had, Shirley. I had denial about what red flags were. I didn't even know yeah. what a red flag was. <laughs> I know, that's funny. I'm laughing because in Jamaica, there's a saying that, go, you know, people always say, red flag. I mean, you know, right away, pay attention. You know, your friends would always say that. Red I flag. I love it. We never said yeah. that. We didn't huh? know anything. And our parents <laughs> didn't know anything. And, you know, even today, if I'm in a quirky mood and I'm going to give a workshop and I walk in and I say to this room full of people, all ages, how many of you have gotten the kind of attention you needed today? You know what they do, Shirley? They laugh. Mm -hmm. Right, right. They laugh. They laugh. Because our, did anybody in your, uh, well, you came from an island, but it was a very different kind of culture, I gather, from Jamaica. Did anybody in your early life ever say to you or ever ask you, Shirley, what kind of attention would you like from me? Oh, my God. Are you kidding? Absolutely well, not. And what they were saying to us, our children are to be seen and not heard. That's you right. Know, the old adage. Yeah, that's what we heard. You know, it's that's what about, we heard. Yeah. Yeah, your kids, they don't, yeah, you don't really have much value, you know, well, and it's really interesting how, you know, you're going to be dominated by us, you know, and it's it's fascinating how, you know, you grew up, you know, and, and how you, what you experience then, you sort of take forward because you have to be this kind of goody two-shoe or you're going to be the rebel, right? And... <laughs> That's me. <laughs> that, yeah. You just break out or you are you, you know. Thank you. Yeah. We're we're having such a good time that we have to go back to a commercial, Shirley. But we'll be back again in a few seconds. Stay with us. 
Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern. Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at SoarWithKatie.com. And this is your host, Alice Aspen March, with her marvelous guest, Shirley Moulton. And Shirley, I want to tell you, I want to ask you this question. How does your work with the Academy of Life really fit into what we're talking about? I know you've had lots of wonderful speakers, but how, how did well, you find, the, yeah, how did you find the, oh, the uh, attempt? Alice, the work that we're doing at the Academy of Life is, is, is it's, 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 perfectly aligned with the work that you're doing. It's like perf- perfectly aligned because at the Academy of Life, the whole, our premise is, and the reason it was started was we discovered that there was no work more important than the inner personal development of a human being. Okay. So yes. when you think about how can we be, um, how do we become the best caregivers? How can we give attention? You have to be at your best in order to really, truly give attention, right? Yes. And in order to be at your best, you there's work to be done on yourself. A level of self-care when you're really looking at yourself, going through your life, and truly doing deep a deep dive and a deep analysis into who you are, you know, and how you show up in the world. And if, and you, you got to go into that space and say, and not be afraid of what you find. And so honestly come up with, okay, this is who I am. I'm not perfect. I do have flaws and I'm working on them. So you start from that place of in constant, it's almost like constant improvement where you're trying to always be mindful and aware of yourself and your behavior and how that's going to impact. And 
and just keep working at that and trying to be the best that you can be every day in every way you get better and better. And that's hard work. That's deep work. And that's why a lot of people don't do it because it is, it is top of mind. It's not something you can put in the back of your mind and just, um, you know, Oh yeah, I'll get to it. No, it's, it's conscious. It's mindful. It takes, you know, every second of the day, if you find yourself reacting a certain way, you're checking yourself, why am I behaving this way? What's going on? You know, so it's a constant analysis and working on constantly improving yourself and with your, and with, and as you're doing that within a family setting, you know, whether you're with your husband and your kids, you, you're sharing with them because you're all on that path. But I think you have to be your best. And that's what we felt at the Academy of Life, that you've got to develop this deep interpersonal relationship because it's your inner wealth that's going to produce, allow you to give people the attention they seek and to see people truly the way they want to be seen, to see them and to let them know that they matter, to see them and to let them know that they're safe with you. And that's that inner wealth that allows you to deliver on those things. And along with that inner wealth, they, we must have, as a human, inner permission. Mm. And that, that mm. is not given so far because we pay attention to what people see, see on the television set. You know, mm -hmm. the commercials lie. And mm -hmm. if we let our kids watch the commercials without intervening, we are lying to our kids. They're not going to have more friends if they buy a certain toy or eat a certain uh, food or uh, uh, use a certain toilet paper. That, right. But that, I, that, right. that inner, inner permission has to come in childhood by watching mm. our parents be transparent. Like, I got to tell you, my mother... My mother and my husband and I went on a sort of a spa trip once, and he played golf, and my mother and I talked for hours. And she said to me, you know something, Alice? When you were a little, you were about eight years old, I did something that was very bad. I, I regret it, and I'm sorry, and I'd like to apologize. That meant I knew what she was talking about. I didn't say, I know, mother. I couldn't say that. I just listened. She, I, I was very allergic in the spring to the sap in the trees. And mm. I was, I, 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 it was one of those days when my allergies were really in full bloom and I was acting out, you know, I was whining. And she said, if you keep acting like that, I'm not going to let you go to Ann. You will not go to Ann's birthday party. So, of course, what do you think I did? Tested. Right. And she mm -hmm. said, okay, you doesn't, now you got to go to the phone and tell her you've been naughty and you can't come. I still remember that. And that's what my mother was talking about. She said, I could have handled it differently. I could have asked you if you'd like to lie down or just sit and mm. I could have read to you. Mm. Yep. We can yeah. go back. We can go back. I know it. And reframe experiences. I do that in my workshop. I absolutely do. Oh, you know, that's, that's so true because um, it, I have an example of that in my, um, I remember a couple of years ago, I used to take my grandnephew to school every day and I would get to the schoolyard with him and there was this feeling of overwhelming sadness when he left and I couldn't understand what was going on with me. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, what is this? Where are these feelings coming from? And I thought, because we, you know, it was close to, you know, we just experienced, you know, 9-11 here in New York. I thought, oh, my God, I just that energy. I'm sensing the school is downtown. Maybe I'm having sadness from that. And I had a whole host of other reasons where this feeling of sadness was coming from. And so I, 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 I would call my sister every time I'd leave the schoolyard. And I'd say, look, this is weird. I'm feeling really sad and sometimes scary and crying. And so I sat with this feeling for a while, and this went on for about six months. 
And one day in one of my quiet moments, because I was doing a lot of meditation back then, something dawned on me, something dawned on me. And I said, you are sad because you were that sad little girl in the schoolyard. You are that little girl. You're seeing yourself when your mom went away what? to England to study. You were left. You were technically abandoned, right? And right. that's what you're feeling. You're feeling that abandonment in that schoolyard. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. And so I thought about it and I said, this is it. And I thought, well, I got, you know, because some, you have to forgive those emotions. You got to look at it and say, all right, so, yeah, I was abandoned. I was sat in the, in, in the schoolyard. How can I work this through, right? How yep. can I work this through? And, you know, talking to your, giving the self-talk, the self-care, you're not alone. And really working, you know, using whatever tools you need to come through it. And at the end of the day, to forgive whomever you think in your mind abandoned you. And yep. so that's, that's how that came up. You know, and it was like, wow. Did you, you share know, that with your, uh, with anybody? Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I shared it with my family, you know, and my family and um, my mom and all of that. Yes. Yeah. That's a good totally. thing because those emotions are picked up, whether you think they are or not. This is what I'm saying. Exactly. The feelings reside in our body. They kind of like stay there. Yep. And then they're yep. triggered. If you're paying attention, you know, they're triggered by certain experiences. I couldn't put it together immediately. You know, it took me a while. But then I knew there was this uncomfortability, this sadness. And it was me because, you know, we, you know, we had a, a certain amount of abandonment. Not that it wasn't for a great cause. My mom went to further her education, but there's impact. You know, when we make these decisions, there is impact on those that you're caring for when you leave yes. a child at, you know, four and five or three, and then you don't see them again for three years. It's, it, there's impact. She, and was your mother and, gone that long? Yes, yes. She, she went, you know, she studied nursing and was there for all that time. Wow. And, um, yeah, I never came back. You know, she, it's not like you came back on the holidays. You know, it wasn't, you know, back in those days, you know, you didn't have a plane you could hop on and right. all of that. So you stay there for the three years and then you come back. And, and I recognize that watching my little one, my little grand, I don't have kids, but watching my grand, my nieces and my grand nieces grow up and nephews, that when they're like at age four and you're every day with your parents and right. then, you know, one day that parent and that energy is gone, just boom, right. and you don't, you can't even understand what has happened. You are left with something. You are left yeah. with something. And that is a feeling of sadness. And, you know, because the person that you're used to is gone. And no one, no one bothers to explain, but at me, even at four or three, you probably couldn't understand. But, I, think that, um, I think we could understand. It's not you only- You know what, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But nobody bothered to talk to us. That's right, that's, that's what was so awful. And you know what, you mentioned the word energy. Attention mm -hmm. is energetic. So you're mm -hmm. right on. We miss that energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. We miss that energy, and it, it wasn't there. It's gone. It's just like here today, gone tomorrow. And These are the stories that I want to put in my book because we've all got them, more or less. And I just, I think people, I mean, I, if somebody tells me a visual story, for instance, because I'm very visual, I will never forget it. Mm, mm -hmm. That's right. It's the stories that matter. It's the stories of how, you know, you uncover these things and how you come through them so you can be a better person, you know, so you're not hanging around with, you know, bad feelings. So, and yeah, you're not, because when, when you're hanging around with bad feelings, it sort of shuts you down, you know, because then you can't, you really don't have the space to see other people because you're always focusing on all you and all your 
troubles and this, that, and the other. Um, and if you can just be that, keep working on being your best self and freeing up a lot of this baggage, then you are able to truly see others. It gives you more space to see other people and to give them the attention they need. Right on. Now, how could people get a hold of you? I don't know what kind of work you're doing during this uh, uh, COVID, but how right. if people so are, we, yeah. we are technically, you know, because the Capital of Light was built on, because of my abandonment issues, I'm very, very keen on face to face to face contact, and we can pick this up after the. Um, okay, well, uh, yeah. but I want uh, yeah, we have to go to commercial, but I want you to tell people the best ways to get a hold of you, because I'm sure someone would they would want to. We'll be back in a few. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale. An international initiative called Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. And we're back, and we're still alive. And we're having this marvelous mm-hmm. conversation. And I want Shirley Moulton to tell you all how she, how you could get a hold of her. Do you have a website, Shirley? Mm-hmm. Um, www.theacademyoflife.com. And academy is spelled A-C-A-D-E-M-I of life. One word, dot com. And does that tell, uh, uh, there's lots to learn on that, I'm sure. And can they reach you on that Academy of Life website, too? Yes, there's an email address on there where we can be contacted at info at theacademyoflife.com. Thank you. And are you doing any work this summer? I mean, we're through summer this coming winter. Right. People- so, right. So uh, that's what I was saying earlier is, um, Because of COVID, we sort of shut everything down in March um, because all of our events are in person. It was, it was, it's our belief at the Academy that we want to have in person, you know, and that's probably because of my abandonment issues where I think that people are, we are social animals and we need to connect in person. And the idea of doing... Yeah, of doing online learning and online things didn't interest me because it is when we are together and we can learn from each other and make those kind of connections, that's where the magic happens. And so so we've sort of um, been on hold, but it's interesting that you'd ask because um, I'm going to do one event in uh, early December 
with one of the former speakers to the Academy of Life. She is a, she's an intuit. She's very, very wise woman. And I thought because of COVID, we just need, people need some inspiration. So I am going to ask her to, and we're going to do this on Zoom, uh, much to my chagrin, but it's better than nothing. Just sort of end the year on a, an upbeat note and for her to come on and um, provide some inspiration and hope and just engage us in a conversation on what has happened and where we're headed. So I'm coming. We're doing it. <laughs> yes, you'll be on Zoom with me, Alice. Totally. Um, so I'm going to put that together and we'll get the mailers out probably by, you know, before the end of November. And, what's the um, date? I want to, what's the date? Yeah, that, we're going to talk about that on the 20th. I'm meeting with her and we're going to set that up. It will probably be the first, the first two weeks, either the first or second week in December. Okay, um, good. I wrote it. Yeah, so we're going to do that. And then, you know, I, I just think that we needed to close the year with something wonderful. I agree. I'm going to do something, too. Also, I want you, to, if you don't mind, to explain what a social entrepreneur is. Well, a social entrepreneur is, uh, is, an, is an organization that has, uh, you know, a mission that has, it's, it's different from, like, you know, a court, a corporate enterprise, their goal is to, you know, to make money for their shareholders. Ours is to build better lives. So a social enterprise is one that's out there trying to do something that's purposeful and that will enhance and make, you know, and totally um, enhance the lives of uh, people. Um, so that's what a social enterprise is. You know what? It's taken me mm -hmm. this long to ask you that question, and that's exactly what I do. And that's I have exactly a what you do. We're, we're have... in the same business. Yes. <laughs> we're in the same business. <laughs> yes. Well, that's what you get along, uh, Alice. I think so. What would you like to li uh, leave our listeners with, please? Well, I would like maybe, um, I think what I'd just like to leave people with is the, the, the currency for the 21st century, really, um, and I think we use one of the words today, we use empathy yes. and compassion. Yes. And I want to use add that one. And I, I just, I think that for me, for the future, in order for us to see a better future, to live a better future, then these two um, characteristics, the empathy and compassion are um, are things that we have to have in our toolbox. We have to own those. And we have to figure out how to become more empathetic and how to become co more compassionate if you're not already working on that. Because and I think that's the currency for the 21st century going forward. And as you see, we have a fractured world, a fractured United States, and it's only through that that avenue that we're going to heal. I would like to add something to that, please. I mm -hmm. know that my work, what I've discovered, leads to a growth in self-empowerment. Mm -hmm. People feel more powerful to, to work for other people. They, they have skills and they have empathy. And they have mm -hmm. they have all the good things because that's what I teach. Yeah. And this is this has been a wonderful hour, a wonderful. It's gone so fast, you know. Um, I think I, you know, I'm I'm pretty old. I'm pretty old, and I mm -hmm. think I I would be dead if I hadn't discovered what I discovered. I don't know why I was chosen or whatever, because mm -hmm. my parents' programming was not good for them. And it certainly wasn't good for me. And I recognized that. I was a selective mute until I was five years old. And it was all about energy. I didn't like them because they're, they're, I was an only child and I was a replacement child for my father's sister. And replacement mm -hmm. ch children are supposed to be perfect 
or something will happen to them too. Right. But I didn't know any of this. I didn't know any of this. But I, uh, I, they were on demand. That was their modus operandi, to demand from me what they needed. Yeah, and, and, most, and most parents are not only demanding what they needed, they are looking at you to fulfill what they didn't fulfill in their lives. That's, that's exactly right. So I became you know? a... Uh, yep, yep. And my parents were in the medical profession, my father was, and they heard that mm -hmm. people were talking about his daughter, what's wrong with her, because she doesn't speak. And so my mother took me to a child development center in Detroit, a very well-known one, and I was tested, didn't say a word, but my mother, God bless her, kept the note that they sent home, and it said... Oh, I'll, I'll say this really fast. It said, Alice was a pleasure to test. She was fun. When she was through, she went over to the corner, put her snowsuit on and her gloves and left. And I leave her alone because she'll develop at her own rate. I love that that's, so much. <laughs> that's so wonderful, Alice. You were, you were that kid in the back of the room. Remember we talked about earlier being in the back of the room, being the observer. So you yes. observed. Oh, yes, your, I did. You know? Yeah, yep. that's what you were doing. You're observing what was going on around you till you decided to, you know, enter the world. As, You're you absolutely know. correct. And that's why I make such connections. And that's why my work is so broad. Absolutely. You yes. are so right. I was the kid in the back of the room. Well, I'm not in the back of the room anymore. Thank you so oh, no, much. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you were a super guest. Oh, and, thank uh, you, Alice, for having me, and I so look forward to sharing more and more and more. Thank you. Thank you, and I'll see you on Zoom in December. In December, absolutely. Well, stay, stay safe. stay well. You too, stay safe and well. We'll be on next week again. I don't know who, oh, I know who our guest is, but I'm not going to tell you. Okay, <laughs> we, we have a... Uh, an assortment of different people talking about how they use the, the material that I talk about in their own lives and for the people they work with. So have a good week, everybody. Bye for now. You've been listening to Attention Matters with your host, Alice Aspen March. Tune in each week as Alice will provide tools, insights, and an innovative perspective on how to consciously give and receive quality attention here on Attention Matters. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.